Welcome to TGIF. And welcome to the Book of Psalms. We have made it to the Book of Psalms, and you know there are quite a few of those, and we're going to be giving you some specific ones to read. And as we enter the Book of Psalms, with everything going on around the world, just listening right now, just the, the devastation and hearing testimonies of people without power, having lost everything. And then here we are entering Psalms. And that's such a place that a lot of us go to when we're looking for that encouragement. And I'm just so thankful that there's organizations and churches and people stepping up to help. And I mean, I know we've been a part of that as well, to help these people in need. I love seeing all of that. Which takes us to the word of the day, which is compassion. Yeah, it's there. I mean, even though we're so far removed from the devastation that's happening in current time with the hurricanes, but there's so many ways for us to get involved and just that sense of compassion. And then Psalms, like, I mean, I'm sure some of these, some people are reading these in, in that crying out to the Lord. Absolutely, yeah. And so we are specifically looking at Psalm 145. And so our verse today is verses 8 and 9. The Lord is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. The Lord is good to everyone. He shows compassion on all of his creation. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at the, the book of Psalms, we know that the first two Psalms are kind of the introduction to all of the Psalms. And Psalm 150 is really the doxology or that sending of all of the Psalms. So while each of them have their nuances and elements that are unique to them, there is structure here. And so they are set up as five books. So the Psalms are set up and divided into five books. Hmm, where else do we know about five books? Oh, the Torah. The Torah is made up of the first five books of the Bible. So it makes sense that Moses set the Torah up with those first five books. And David sets the Psalms up with these five books. And so that's how they're divided. We could never take them all on. In TGI, that, would be a, that would be a long time of just working on Psalms. So what we're looking at is authors. And so that's why the first set that we're looking at, so King David, that's author of so many of them, 73 psalms King David authored. And so this 145 is one of his psalms. And so as we look at it and we try to understand, one thing to always remember is, is it is organized. This isn't just a bunch of randomness put together. There's a thought behind it. There's a process. And so the intentionality is always there to tell of God's formation of his people, first of all, and then the rise of David's kingdom, that Davidic kingdom, and then looking at exile. So when we hear about pain and suffering, mm -hmm. that's the exiles. And then it ends with this overall call to worship. Mm -hmm. Through it all, we see God's people struggle, find joy, go pain. But in the end, it's always a reminder that we are to worship God. And so, like I said, King David did 73, 150 songs. Do you have a favorite? I mean, we all, I mean, for me, I mean, there's some that we gravitate <coughs> to more than others. Psalm 23, obviously, uh, you know, if you're talking about the probably the top three, right. Psalm 23 would be in there because it's rich. It's so incredibly rich, and it's hard to match those words in that one. But that's one of David's finest because it's about hope and trusting in God. Mm -hmm. So they're all, they're comforting words, especially when we're in, when we're in moments of loss. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's so incredible about all the Psalms. But getting back to the Psalm 145 and that verse 8, how the Lord is merciful. It takes us back to Exodus chapter 34, verse 6, which is when, through God's compassion for the people, after the Ten Commandments were broken, two new tablets are coming. God did not have to do that. But his compassion for his people caused him to do that. And so I think that that's what we see. God has compassion on his people, and that produces this, this expression of love. Like, I know... I love you, and here, let's try this again. <laughs> and we know it's going to always end in these circles, these vicious circles, but that's how it works. So John Wesley, if you know anything about the Methodist Church, John Wesley was that founder, wasn't intending on finding, a, you know, discovering a Methodist Church or find, founding it, 
but he did, and so he preached a lot. And this verse 9 is what really I want us to talk about, because that's the core here. God reaches beyond having compassion, not only on humans, but his whole creation, the whole cosmos, the heavens, the earth. And that's what we need to understand is that God has compassion on everything. So even when we see fires and when we see all the devastation on, on land and masses, God has compassion on all that. It's like when you see a tree burn down, right? Mm -hmm. Burn to Chris. And then one year you go back and it's still all black. Mm -hmm. Two years, like we'll drive over the mountains where there's been burned areas. And after five or six years, you start to see some growth, some yeah. new growth. So that's compassion. And I think we overlook that far too often. I mean, do we look at every bit of God's creation, knowing that his compassion for his people and his creation, that he cares about everything he created, not just everyone, everything. And just like I mentioned at the beginning, that devastation with the hurricanes, it's like God's compassion being lived out through people that are coming alongside, which will then become the rebuilding, you know, the, the things coming back to life, God's creation. Like you can just see this picture. It's like we can engage in God's compassion each and every day. Yeah. But do we? Do we engage in the compassion we have for creation? We know Sandy Richter's real big on that with um, the environmental things that she talks about. But we can engage in that by the way we care for God's beautiful creation, not taking it for granted. And then let alone compassion for people. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. that's what we're called. Too. Like, God is compassionate, but while we're here on this earth, I mean, through Jesus and the Holy Spirit, we have the, the opportunity for compassion to be, God's compassion to be lived out through us for the, His glory, for His kingdom. We live in a world that sees people and resources, and they, they manage them sometimes well. There are those mm -hmm. that manage them very well, but there are some that manage them very poorly like underpaying people to do a job, that's just mm -hmm. terrible, or taking a resource and just stripping every piece of it till there's nothing left, and rather all they're seeing is the ability to, to gain prosperity and money, mm -hmm. rather than saying, how can I manage these resources so that they're always improving and getting better, and you know, people, people being trafficked, or people being worked mm -hmm. long, long hours. Or we even saw one tragedy in this hurricane where the workers were forced to keep working and then, and then a number of them died in a, in a tragic in a flood. They should have, you know, that's one of those places where they didn't value the people enough. And we've got to be careful about that because uh, when, when things are happening, we've got to see people as God sees people. We've got to see resources as God sees resources. And so working those two and navigating them together, I think that in the long run, we really can be a people that are, are working both of them together where we all have prosperity. We all have this ability to enjoy everything other people and the resources mm -hmm. around us. So, I mean, the Lord is merciful mm -hmm. and compassionate. Do we have that desire to be a person seen as merciful, meaning not perfect, but that we extend mercy and grace mm -hmm. and compassion and caring? And, and when we see a need, do we just think about what we can do or do we put it in action? And I think we always think about it, like every time I run out of McDonald's gift cards, I always keep $10 McDonald's gift cards to give out to people. And just on the way here, I was stopped at a light and there was some, I didn't have my $10 McDonald's gift card. That's just a little bit of compassion that I can show to this person. And why don't I just go make sure I have those gift cards? Like, we don't make it a priority. And I think this psalm reminds us that it's God's calling us to do it. And I think it, really when you start looking at yourself, too, and your life, the life you're living, it's easy to, uh, to get out of balance. And that's what we're talking about. How can we be in this balance of, of what God sees and how God sees mm. his creation and, and our needs, right? Our, our, our basic needs and, and that balancing act of trying to, to balance them well. I think it's easy to get out of balance. And the first thing that comes up is usually when we get less compassion mm -hmm. about things, especially others and God's creation. Do you really want to listen to the other person's story? Or just like, 
you got no time for this, you're going to annoy me, I don't want to deal with it. And rather than saying, okay, what is the story here? Tell me the story mm -hmm. and how you got there. And just the other day, someone was telling both of us um, that what was shared with her through a meeting that she had. And I just think it is so beautiful that Jesus deeply loves his creation, mm -hmm. each and every person. Jesus deeply loves. Do we deeply love? And I think until we get to that point, compassion isn't something you do. The $10 gift card isn't something I, it, I do. The compassion had to be because Jesus loves that person deeply. And I have the means to hand, to give, to put into action, but it has to be that deep rooted love that Jesus has for me has he has that same love for each and every person and every bit of his creation and we take it for granted we do and I think we are in a, a needed opportunity because of being in ministry we hear some of these stories that you know the average person doesn't mm -hmm. get to hear and like I even heard one the other day it's of a young lady who run her she had a flat tire and literally Standing next to a garbage can where she had, where she had pulled off to get out of the way was a tire, and do you know what that tire fit her car. <laughs> I mean, who, how does that ever happen? Right. I don't right. know how that happens. These are the, like the stories that that we get to hear uh -huh. being in ministry that other people don't necessarily. Right. And it's like God is so compassionate. I mean, mm. I tell you, God is so so good. And even when we are inconvenienced and when things aren't going right, if we will just take a breath. God is there, and God is always with. Us. Mm -hmm. And he calls us to step up. And so the question we leave you with, how is your compassion for others and all creation? I mean, do you, do you take that deep love that God has for you and extend it to others, knowing that everything he created, he deeply loves? Like, wow, that's deep. For one song. Yeah. So for next week, go read the rest. No, just kidding. <laughs> You're going to read Psalm 73. And of course, we encourage you to read as many Psalms as you want, because we're going to be moving out of King David's mm -hmm. Psalms, right? So you could actually look through them and see all the King mm -hmm. David ones, and you could go read them. Just like when you read Psalm 73, I bet you'll see there's an author. And we're going to focus on that mm -hmm. author next week as well, just like we focused on King David this week. You'll kind of see a theme yeah. as we... Go through the book of Psalms in five episodes. Make it a great week and we'll see you next time on TGIF. Bye.